What's going on guys? It's the most upvoted Stack Overflow answer, also known as Ben Rogjan, AKA the Seattle Data Guy. Today, I wanted to talk about jobs. And no, I am not running for office anywhere, so not that kind of talk about jobs. I mean, talking about data jobs. Let's talk about which data jobs are in demand, what they do, as well as what salaries they offer. In particular, I want to focus on jobs that range from data analyst to ML engineer. So really a wide spectrum of skills as well as salaries and kind of what you can expect and maybe even discussing which one is right for you. Because at the end of the day, as much as I'm gonna be referencing salary, I think what is always important when thinking about jobs is not just your end paycheck, but do you enjoy the work? Because if you are a top level data analyst, ML engineer, etc., you're going to make a decent amount of money because either you're going to be a high level individual contributor or a high level manager, both leading to a better paycheck. But if you dislike the work, find it boring, or just not good at it for one reason or another, you won't perform as well. And then you might not be as happy as you could be as well as possibly making a little less than you should be. So let's talk about five data jobs that have high demand in the next few years. According to the World Economic Survey that was done back in 2020 on jobs, jobs such as data analysts, data scientists, and big data specialists are three of the most in-demand jobs for the next few years. Thus, we're gonna start with data analysts and see exactly kind of maybe what you can expect in terms of salary, as well as talk a little bit about what you would do as a data analyst. As the name suggests, data analysts often analyze data. This usually means that you're going to be spending some time either connecting to or working with some form of database, writing SQL queries, or maybe working with things like Power BI or Power Query to mesh data together and create some sort of dashboard, all for the goal of answering questions for the business. You might be creating metrics that the business can then use on dashboards. So you can start comparing certain KPIs over a certain time period, and then your business can make better decisions based off that data. You also might just do ad hoc analysis where you're just kind of doing a quick study or analysis on some certain question that your manager might have in order to drive some new venture or initiative in the business, all with the focus of basically slicing, dicing, analyzing data. I would say that the tools that data analysts use are changing quite rapidly. I've seen a lot of data analysts go from just using Excel to now using things like R and SQL, where they're really trying to answer questions through as many ways as possible. Because at the end of the day, I would say data analysts are focused on answering questions and then driving certain decisions based off those questions versus just you know using a specific tool. How you get there is kind of up to you. Like if you use a pivot table in Excel versus maybe pivoting data in Python, is there much of a difference at the end of the day? Not really. If you're only creating an ad hoc analysis, there is some argument, of course, if you're going to repeat it, whereas code might be a little more useful in that terms, but that is just a distraction. Let's get down to the numbers. Looking at the numbers in terms of salary for data analysts, there is a broad range, of course. I've seen everywhere as low as 40K to as high as somewhere in the range of 100K. But for the United States, I think salary.com has a pretty good generalized number where they average that you're likely to make somewhere in the range of like 68 to $87,000 a year. Of course, depending on level, state, company, and so on. And I also compared this to business analysts who are pretty much the exact same range where it's about 70 to 87K. So if you prefer being more of a business analyst versus a data analyst, you pretty much will make about the same regardless of the role. And there is some crossover in the work that you will do. But let's pick some outliers like Fangs to see what you can make at a Fang and not just on average. Looking, for example, at Netflix and Amazon, data analysts at these companies make upwards of $100,000 a year, at least on average. So you can see that there are companies that will pay six figures for solid data analytics skills. I will say that these companies in particular will likely require SQL. Whereas other companies might be a little more loose with this requirement, I've always found that Amazon in particular is very SQL heavy for a lot of roles, regardless of if you're a data engineer or a data scientist, you will be expected to write SQL. In fact, that was one of the things that one of my friends picked up when they interned at Amazon. They were more of a finance person. And when they went and became a finance analyst at Amazon, they had to learn a ton of SQL very quickly because all of their work required them to do it. So these higher salaries usually do come with higher technical expectations. But as you can see, there are six figure salaries in the data analyst world. Let's talk about what this channel mostly focuses on, which is data engineers for the next kind of salary as well as role. For those of you unfamiliar with the data engineering role, 
a lot of our work involves creating things like data infrastructure that manages a lot of the data pipelines that we build, all which generally focuses on extracting data from a lot of sources, such as third-party systems, uh, external data sources, maybe we're scraping it from online, and then ports it over into some form of centralized analytical storage system. This could be something like a data warehouse, a data lake, a data lake house, if you may, all to create a core data set that then data analysts and data scientists can utilize effectively. We use tools like Python, as well as some low code solutions and drag and drop solutions in order to make this work possible, as well as work heavily with data warehousing solutions and database systems like Snowflake and BigQuery, all to create again that centralized repository where you can go to analyze your data. So this means we do a lot of system design, programming, automation, as well as like data modeling and a couple other roles that we often have to take on. Meaning that this is a pretty technical role right out of the gate, regardless of if you're doing low code or not. There is a lot of thought that goes into how you develop tables in order to make sure that they are optimal for end users, as well as store all the information that the business needs. This garners, according to salaries.com, a 90 to 130K on kind of average salary for data engineers, kind of in that average 50th percentile range. But there are obviously extremes in this case as well. For example, if you were just to go on the H1B data site where you can kind of just search all the roles of people who apply for H1Bs and the salaries that they're getting here in the US, you'll see that a lot of data engineers are making upwards of 130, 150, maybe even 180K a year without including stock. And that's at some of the top companies like Amazon and Uber, and even companies like Netflix, where you're likely making easily a quarter of a million dollars. But again, these are companies that are in the tech industry and have high profit margins and very kind of low costs other than usually employees. So they can easily scale the business and make a ton of extra money, even by hiring one extra engineer for somewhere near a quarter of a million dollars. I would say somewhere in that maybe 100 to 150K range is more realistic depending on again, where you live city wise. And I think this is proven by all of these examples that we're gonna kind of pop up here, where this is a very average salary and it's more than reasonable. And in fact, depending on when this video comes out, I might have already put out another video where I referenced the fact that most Americans do not make six figures, only about the top 10% of earners make that range. So if you're already past 100K, you're technically already part of the 10%. But obviously there's almost a 2X difference between 130K and 250K. Some of that does have to do with where you live. For example, if you're in the Bay Area and making 250K, yes, you'll be able to afford rent, but buying a house probably won't be happening for a long time for you when the probably most affordable and reasonable house will be upwards of a million dollars and you're already spending easily $30,000 on rent. So sometimes it does depend where you live and even some company like Netflix might pay you less if you're living somewhere out farther away where it's cheaper. So I wouldn't get too hung up on those higher salaries depending on where you live. You might have a lower cost of living than the people who are getting those salaries. And again, I really just wanted to focus on, first of all, the average and then some of the outliers, because I think oftentimes newspapers focus on like the outliers where it's like, here are the craziest salaries you can get. And that's great, but it can also throw people off to see what is reasonable. On the flip side of data engineers are obviously data scientists and looking at their salaries, it's kind of in a similar range for data engineers. I'd say the average kind of starts a little bit higher, somewhere in that like 97K to 150K range. But overall, the difference is pretty minuscule when you really think about the bigger picture. If you prefer data engineering work, then why would you try to be a data scientist? Also, oftentimes it seems like data scientists are expected to have more of a master's degree um, or have some sort of PhD. So you will need arguably more schooling even to kind of be considered for a lot of these roles. It's not always necessary. I've definitely seen people go to like general assembly or something similar and then get a data scientist role. So I wouldn't get too stuck on schooling, but there usually does tend to be some sort of like secondary schooling, or just need to add either a lot of statistical background or programming background, depending on where you're coming from. And again, in the US, this is a very top tier salary when you think about it. Making upwards of six figures really is not that prominent, despite what people might tell you on Instagram or maybe even on the ads prior to this video, it isn't that common. And for this role, I wanted to kind of go through actually a progression of someone's data science salary. In particular, uh, Jay Feng of Interview Query put up his kind of progression of salary as he went from company to company. And he kind of, I think, gave a good example of what a salary could be for a data scientist, starting with his new grad position where he got a job at Huge and was making $95,000 a year. 
with a $15,000 bonus. So as you can see, he was already making about six figures right out of school. Now, this average salary of about almost $100,000 continued for the next about two years till he got a mid-level position where he finally broke over that like eighty to $90,000 salary with a bonus and now was making 110 at Monster and was getting a $40,000 bonus. Eventually that went up to 130 and was eventually making $40,000 in bonus. So you can see he's now almost making 200K. And I'm sure if he went to a company like Facebook, he could easily make upwards of 200 to a quarter million dollars if he were to go again to one of those companies in the Bay Area. That's always a stipulation. These companies for now are paying based on location. We'll see what happens in the future and what articles come out to maybe talk about the fact that, hey, maybe we should pay people for the work that they do and not where they live. And for those of you who have been living under a rock for the last 10 years, since Harvard put out their article about sexiest job in the world being data scientists, data scientists really do a ton only because of the fact that the term is so broad. In some cases, I'd say data scientists do more data analytics work where they're doing a lot of SQL queries and just answering questions. In other roles, they're definitely doing a lot more predictive work where they're trying to write models to actually predict certain outcomes. Maybe they're trying to create some fraud detection models or do some NLP work, maybe do some sort of computer vision. Again, for some people that might be crossing over into the ML space. So that can depend on kind of where you work, but that is kind of the broadness of, uh, I'd say data scientists. They can be more of a data analyst kind of position and doing a lot more product focus and doing a lot more product focused analytics, or they can be more on the very pure kind of data science route where I'd say they're doing like things like, again, fraud detection and other models that are very um, math heavy and require a lot of understanding of why they're picking different models. And it's all about generally trying to predict the future versus doing, I think, analytics, which tend to be a little more backwards leaning. And that's the third salary we're looking at. So let's now jump to number four, which is ML engineer. Now, again, ML engineer can mean a ton of things, but the way I look at it and the way I'd say I've seen it implemented at most companies is ML engineers tend to be more of a software engineering position that have some understanding of data science, but really work with data scientists to implement ML models. Again, in some cases, they are more data scientists that also understand some software engineering and can implement those models into a system. But in larger companies, it's usually easier to split those roles and just have data scientists do a ton of research and then have the ML engineers implement that research. Because for anyone who's ever try to implement an ML model, you know it's not very easy. In fact, that's the first problem I ran into when I started trying to do data science work was I developed a model and I realized I had no idea how I was supposed to implement it. Um, it is this kind of weird gap that you don't realize until you kind of get there that I have no idea where this is supposed to even live and how it's supposed to be put into production. So the question is, how much do ML engineers make? Looking at salaries, and because this position is a little more software focused, I would say that it makes sense that on average, they are making about $20,000 more than even what we saw data scientists were making, upwards into the 113K range. And that's just on the medium side. Obviously, you can see on more of the high end, you're seeing 150K. And then if you go somewhere like levels.fyi, you'll see that there's even upwards of, again, a quarter million dollars. Because especially if you work for a large tech company, that sounds about right. Now, just to make sure that it's clear, these are the outliers. And much of this is driven by stock value. So if someone's stock happens to go down, like let's say, for example, you're working at Netflix and you got a lot of stock early on, but now the stock's halved, these kind of salaries I'm putting out might not be as good as what I'm saying. And it will drive the average down because stock drives a lot of compensation at companies like Facebook, Netflix, Amazon, these are kind of the major differentiators when it comes to even things like software engineer versus data engineer who have not a huge difference in base pay, but who have a major difference in their stocks and RSUs. Finally, let's talk about a role that supposedly makes a million dollars at some companies. Just kidding, these are definitely the high levels of people making a million dollars. In fact, there's a whole discussion about this that you can see on Quora where <laughs> Literally someone saying I would disregard someone's answer because yes, a million dollars is possible for this role, but those are for very specific people who are in the top tier. I think that's also a good thing to point out for all of these roles. Many of them, if you work at a thing, might have a million dollar possibility if they are very engineering focused or very like math focused, like ML engineer, data engineer, data scientist, or in this case, research scientists. All of these do have million dollar potentials at fangs based on stock output and various ways that you can actually end up making that much. 
but it's not that easy to do. We're talking about the top 1% of earners. Like in most industries, whether it be taking pictures of your feet or writing programming, generally speaking, only the top 1% of earners really do make these mythical numbers. So if you missed it, I'm referring to research scientists who are, I think, a little more unique to a lot of the fangs and big tech companies, because I think data scientists can become more of an operational role where you either play more of an analytical role, or maybe you just specifically support certain operational needs. Research scientists tend to really do a lot more broad analytics and research where they're doing things that might be completely in the future. They might be doing work that has almost no impact in the immediate now, but in the future, the research that they produce and the papers that they put out for a company can have huge impacts. And so they're doing a ton in terms of like experimentation design, experimentation setup, as well as translating all those outputs and collecting the right data. And like most other technical roles at these fangs, these roles can garner somewhere in the range of 180 to 250K on average, I'd say. And I think that's supported even by these people at Quora who have worked at companies like Google and Microsoft because that generally makes sense, again, for these companies with high profit margins. These are not absurd salaries. Now, before I wrap up, I would love to know if you have any questions about these specific roles and their salaries, or if you have specific data to add to this information and discussion, please comment below. Other than that, I really do thank you for your time and attention, and I will see you guys next time and goodbye.